Imaging Media Center. There's a standing microphone located to your left. Uh, we encourage you to ask questions there. And for those of you joining us virtually on Zoom, uh, be sure and hit the virtual raised hand button so we know you have a question. Uh, and we'll get to you folks as well. Go ahead and ask those questions. We are set up to hear you here on the fourth floor uh, as well. All right, you ready? No. Okay, well, too bad. Uh, in case you missed it on social media uh, this morning, Tony Kanan, the 2013 Indianapolis 500 presented by Gainbridge Champion and of course the 2004 IndyCar Series Champion announced that this May will be his final 500 and final NTT IndyCar Series race. Stop me if you've heard this before. Uh, but and it was Jimmy's fault the first time. Oh, okay. So Fine, that's right. Uh, but on a much more serious note, uh, it's uh, uh, the end of an era, really, when it comes to racing in IndyCar, uh, certainly when it comes to this great race uh, that has been going on for, for over a decade now. And uh, just kind of open it up for your general thoughts uh, before we get into everything, Tony. Thank you. Uh, I don't know, Dave. I mean, it's, it's kind of weird. Uh, you know, I, Laurie asked me this this morning if, if I was prepared. I... I what what does that mean? You know what I mean? Are you you talk about a race that you know you guys? I mean, I see everybody here in this room knows the story, so I don't think I need to repeat the story. But it started when I was six years old with my dad, mm -hmm. and this has been the place that I wanted it to be. I'm fortunate enough that I was able to accomplish everything I did. So to wake up this morning, and we were talking off. You know, before the the interview started, it I wasn't, I didn't think it was a big deal. You know, because I think it was kind of obvious. I mean, I'm 48. People keep saying I'm bald, I'm old, mm -hmm. my nose is growing because it's the only thing that will never stop growing in your body is your nose in your ears. This and that. My friends are making fun of me. Um, and the post went out. Right, we've been preparing this for quite a while with. The Aaron McLaren team, I mean, Lauren and her team are being awesome. And I actually held up pretty good. 9.02, my phone just started to blow up. And that's when it actually really hit me. So it's been a busy day since. Um, it's been a wonderful journey. I, I don't... Somebody said, do you, reg are you, th do you think you're going to regret? Actually, Lauren asked me all those tough questions mm -hmm. this morning. <clears throat> And I, I don't think regret, it's the right word to say. I, am I going to miss it every day of my life? I miss it now. Mm -hmm. Look at Mario Andretti. He drives the two-seater, for, for God's sakes, just because. You know, so I'm fine. I mean, I think I'm fine. I, uh, you know, we're, we're kicking off the 100 days to Indy Friday. Yeah, Friday. I'll kick off 100 days of crying Friday, <laughs> and then uh, we'll see what's going to happen the end of May I think it's just gonna get more difficult from now on I just need to be I'm in peace with my decision I think I have a, a great team behind me I think I had a great career I have a really good shot of winning this thing yeah. and if I win we might be sitting here next year again you never know oh. well that's okay because we've got the script now written we can just, uh, <laughs> copy and paste okay get us to uh, the nitty-gritty car number sponsor what, what's this well, gonna look like you know I want to go back a bit and, and talk about the history of McLaren, sure. actually. Uh, uh, for people that know, my my story with Senna in Brazil, he's been my idol, the guy that actually was responsible for getting me a job in Italy in 93 before he passed, and for everything he's done in his career was with McLaren. You guys, I don't think you guys have any idea. It's the same thing we say... Some people around the world have no idea to come to the Indy 500. Watching Indy 500 on TV is one thing. Mm -hmm. but to come here and witness what happens, it's completely different. It's the same thing. I mean, the Brazilians are crazy. And <clears throat> to have to say, the day that I got my contract, that I was signing this at McLaren up there, I was like, I was, wow. you know, and, and at this point of my career, it's, it's pretty cool. So... Number 66, I mean, Bruce McLaren and McLaren won the, their first race in 1966. Mark Donahue mm -hmm. was here in 72. Um, my first go-kart number was number six. 
I picked that. I raced that my entire go kart career. Won five championships of that. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm... And uh, <clears throat> one of the races that I couldn't race the six, I raced sixty six. And uh, when Zach told me the story and the number, it's, it's just perfect. So that that's what we're rocking on. I love it, mm -hmm. and um, I can't wait. I'm excited. We have also. I know we have a, a lot of sponsors, but. You know, one of, of, of our biggest sponsors, it's Smart Stop, which is, they're jumping in as the main sponsor. I'm um, excited about that. Storage is something that my wife loves, so uh, hopefully we'll stop paying for that and they get, we can get us a deal. If I win the 500, I can get a couple uh -huh. storage for free. Uh -huh. They have 181 stores around, you know, storage uh -huh. units, so we can get a couple. Lauren will be happy about it. Lauren says it's for all your stuff. It doesn't matter for what it is. Okay, she likes fine, storage. Right, I mean, I like my stuff at home. She doesn't like it everything at home. <laughs> so. That's awesome. So the number 66, Smart Stop, Aero McLaren Chevrolet uh, for the 107th running of the Indianapolis 500. Pretty cool. It is. I mean, also, we can't forget all the other partners that are coming in. Yeah. I mean, Aero is here, but, you know, big props to NTT that are part of Air McLaren this year. You've been associated with NTT for, for forever. years now. Yeah. I mean, obviously, they're a serious sponsor, yep. um, but they've been with me for uh, 10 years since we won the 500. I mean, I remember the night before the 2013 Indy 500, I was at dinner and doing a sponsor dinner, and <clears throat> on the table on the side was John McCain and the NTT folks that they were sponsoring uh, Briscoe's car, but also they do the belt buckle for the winner. Mm -hmm. And I, I, haven't, I didn't know them. We met and they said, hey, can we show you something? This is the belt, belt buckle that we're going to give the winner. I said, well, save it. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> we go in the next day, that relationship started and unfortunately uh, John passed away a few years ago, yeah. but they've been great. Uh, they're going to be in Felix's car this year. Yeah. They're a great sponsor of this series. Uh, I can't thank them enough, and I'm really proud of that. And 7-Eleven, that has been with me for 20 years. I mean, Joe DePinto and his team, they, you know, obviously they were a big part of my entire career. I mean, 90% of the races that I won in this series in the championship was with that green car. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited. I can't wait um, to see what's next. I'm probably going to come and... Bug Mark Miles and and his team and mm -hmm. and, and Jay you know, Fry and Jay here. Fry here yeah. just gonna you know I live five ten minutes from here like there's anything I can do <laughs> can, can I warm the Corvette up <laughs> this, the Corvette needs a ride hey Doug can yeah. I fix something yeah. we know you're serious too when you say I'm that. not so, kidding yeah no, exactly I know um, we kind of joke uh, you know the whether this is retirement 3.0 or last lap no <laughs> Dario one. loves that that's the, he yeah. just texted me is this number five yeah. or number six <laughs> I said you're just jealous because you never came back. Ah, yeah, good point. Because he's not really good, at, you know, in the head. <laughs> yeah. That's another show. But so I guess the, when do you know? When do you know? You know? You don't. You're never ready for this. It's but you gotta wait your options. You know, I I, I went from a full full time to a part time, yeah. and and I was you know, you're 48. You had a great career. You. you as much as you don't want to go, it's it's there, yeah. and and if you're smart, you make the right decisions at the right time. I I came to this sport to to win everything I could and to do the best I I could. I I would hate to be coming to this place just to participate. Yeah. So you wait your opportunities, and last year was a really good one. Yeah. And when I finished that race, I was ready. If nothing, because it was a two-year deal that I had announced my retirement two years before. And the question was asked, do you think you can do it again? I, I think I can do it again for 10 more years, the way I take care of myself. But that's not the point. Do we, am I going to get the chance to do it at the right place again, to win it? Mm -hmm. Then Zach called, and I look at the results. The two teams that dominated was the one that I was in, and the one that I was calling. Yeah. So... You can't refuse that, and uh, so yeah. No, I mean, no, I'm not ready. But it's not a sad story. It's it's a really cool one. 
you know it's 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 nice to see how many people appreciate which you know I kind of get surprised I don't you never think about the how you set examples you said you have your 15 year old kid saying that you know you're proud of you and and this the story and you can inspire so many people and the fans and and what IndyCar IndyCar made me I'm I'm an IndyCar driver and I always will be uh, it is a remarkable story, and one more before we open up for questions. Um, but the story of your career, the all-time Ironman record, uh, the IndyCar championship, where you remarkably were the first driver to complete every lap of every race, which is still astonishing, uh, to the emotional win here in 2013 for the Indianapolis 500. I mean, could, when you started, could you have dreamed of stuff like that happening to you? No, of course not. I mean... If I was going to follow what people told me when I was 13, that on April 8th of 1988, when my dad passed, that I had to go back to school to become somebody, because that dream was over, I was probably going to be, I don't know, an accountant or a lawyer or something today. And, and I just put my head down and I said, I'm going to chase my dream. Uh, whatever was going to come out of it, it was going to come out of it, but at least I would sleep at night thinking, you know what, I did what I wanted it to do, but I, I, I'm not the type of guy that I think my accomplishments are, you know, I don't tap myself in the back or anything, I just think they're, they are there, they're real, it's awesome, I mean, yeah, do I look at my board corner every once in a while at home, yeah, of course I do, I mean, do I come to the museum, I think it's pretty cool, but I never start doing this to, to count accomplishments and, and I think it became a lot bigger when you can make a difference you can set examples you can inspire the young kids that don't think they can make it so no I didn't dream of it um, I like it I enjoy yeah. it and I'm proud of it but that's definitely not what drives me you know uh, let's open it up for questions again those of you joining us virtually uh, stand by we'll take your questions here momentarily but for those of you in person, microphone standing right there. And Tony, we'll begin uh, with you. Kind of a two-parter to go off of what you've already talked about. One, how important is it for you this year in your final ride to be with a team that finished second last year? I know you already talked about it. And you finished third last year. So not a lot of drivers get the opportunity to win it in their final one. That's got to be special. And then, you know, you came here in 20, 2002 for your first 500. You've, you've grown a family here. This place has meant so much to you. Think about over the last 20 years how special this city and this racetrack has been to you and some of your thoughts that come to mind. Obviously the 2013 and 500, but some of those uh, amazing memories that you have here as well. Um, so let's tackle the second question first. Um, I met my wife here. Um, this place, it makes me, you know, I have to do a reality check every time I leave Indianapolis because this is anything happens here, for me it's, it's different than the real world, like I called I mean, we went to buy a car yesterday, and we we got out of the dealership. I didn't. We didn't even pay for the car yet. So, ah, just take it. I mean, that's just that's just indie for you. And you go to places, and people, you know, they really appreciate what you've done. And and so that's that's it for this city. I mean, I I think we, as much as I hate the winters, I'm miserable. I nice love this day. place. Yeah, nice today. Day. Well, today, I mean. Thank you, Andy. You guys are so cool to me. Um, this is what we decided to grow our family. We have four kids. They, they love this place, and, and we love this place back. I mean, IndyCar, like I said, it's been my life. I think, uh, you know, we, we all share a passion. Nobody that in that office across the street or even the office here they love what they do. Nobody works here just because it's a job. Because it, we can always get a job that will probably even get, we'll get paid more than just... But, you know, the relationship in the past few years with Mark Miles, with, with Jay, I mean, how much Jay changed the, the driver's communication with IndyCar. Mark with his ideas, I mean, it's, it's... And then Roger comes in, right? I mean, we can't forget about Tony and his family, but then comes in and you look at this place, it's cleaner than my house. Um, 
and and all the things so it's it's just makes you feel proud makes you feel like you made the right choice you know it's not that I knew but I mean it's awesome it's awesome to be part of it it's awesome to to enjoy this and and um, to give it back to the community I think uh, there is always something to be done for this city I've uh, been part of plenty of things that the city has been and always will be we have you know the great community and then your first question was uh, third last year <laughs> third oh, third last year well I mean that was another question my wife asked me so many questions this morning that it was not even funny I'm like what's wrong with you um, is that is it you didn't put more effort into this one is it different I said that would be so unfair why would I I mean I, I left everything I had out there and the, the day that I hate the most was the Monday after 23 of them apart from the one that I won so no I mean I have a chance I have a team that finished second and third uh, and fourth last year I have a boss that he didn't hire me just because to do me a favor to retire in a good car the mindset's still there I'm still waking up at 4 30 in the morning and working out as hard as I can and I still will be and you never know my helmet will be in the truck if something happens I'm still going to be I am going to be ready the same way I was for the past I don't know since the day I was born my dad always told me you're driving a go-kart you got to be physically and mentally ready to drive a Formula One or an Indy car because you never know when the opportunity is going to come so it's no different it would be different I mean I'm probably going to be wearing sunglasses in a hat and crying like a baby on driver's intro that's is, that is expected it's, it's emotion enough when you're not retiring just to be part of this energy in this day and this race and let alone knowing it's your last time you're doing that once you put the helmet on it's game on and it's going to be emotional when I get out of the car regardless of position I finish if I win awesome if I don't I still think this entire place will be supporting me for it so uh, I win either way Real. Whew. Thanks, Dave. A vintage one. Hey, look, at, look at all the white there. In that as chair. old as I am, actually yeah. older than me. <laughs> Ten years to the day. So, um, 1996, you land in Columbus, Ohio. You barely spoke a word of English. And as Dave pointed out, you've had a champion's racing career. But, I mean, not only that, you're part of the fabric of IndyCar racing, of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And, and, if, if you look back on that journey, just how enormous it is. I mean, it'd make a hell of a book or, or a movie. Um, can you just reflect on, on how it all changed for you from, you know, your dad and Italy and Formula One and now where you ended up in, on a crazy journey? Uh, I mean, man, this is going to be a long <laughs> answer if I don't think this through. But, I mean, or if you think about it, right, I mean, yeah, it was, a, it was a dream, but we all have dreams that sometimes we can't fulfill and we just learn how to live with it, right? Well, I come to America and I spoke literally zero English. I had a piece of paper that Rubens had wrote for me. I'm hungry and the translation. Where's the bathroom? And good morning. A couple words that I could actually say it, which was the worst thing because if I say good morning to you, you're going to reply and then I'm not going to understand anything. So it was... And then I meet Steve, right? Steve Horn, which is my mentor, the guy that I feel glad that he actually phoned me last week and said, it's your last one, I'm coming. He's the guy that taught me a lot over those years. He was my mentor. He was a guy that taught me how to respect the Opals. And no disrespect, you were there. The first three years, I sucked in the Opals, for real. Like my first, go back 98 and 99 and my first two seasons in IndyCar and look at my starting place in Milwaukee. We had more cars than actually could start the race and I only did because unfortunately Dan Gurney was struggling with his team and they blew an engine in qualifying but I was dead last and we parked 15, 25 laps into the race and then you go back and you fast forward a couple of years later and most wins that I have is my ovals and we dominate them and so that tells you something right. Um, so, a short answer to that, nothing in my life came easy, and 
the, to master this place, it wasn't easy either. To master the ovals, which was something that I grew up not doing it, and overcome everything else. Right? It was not. You know, I know that was. That's my life. That's what was presented to me, and that's what I had to do. I'm not. I'm not going to sit here for people to feel sorry or to appreciate more or less. Everybody has their destiny, and 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 to me. I, could I imagine all that? No. Could I imagine I'll be running for this long in IndyCar? Because once I made it, fine. And then it took me 12 years to win this race. On my probably that was going to be my last year 10 years ago, when Jimmy and I and Cal Coven we had we had no sponsors, we had nothing, and that changed my life. 10 years later, I'm here deciding that I don't want to do this anymore. So there's so many variables and and so many things that I. But we we could sit down and talk about it. Yes, is it worth a book? Probably, maybe a documentary. Probably, uh, we'll probably have more time now. Lauren says no because I'm still. By the way, I think it's 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 funny when you know. Obviously, I'm, we're we're closing this chapter in IndyCar. But I'm still racing three different series this year. I'm still going to twelve IndyCar races. So actually, this retirement thing it made me. When you race in the car, you can give the excuse that you have 17 weekends. People cannot bother you, because that's what. And now I'm just. I have a lot of time to do a lot of things. But anyway, back to what you're saying. It's. It's. No, I could imagine it's been a great journey and a lot of people that helped. And I'm glad that. Um, you know, I'm coming out of my own, going out of my own terms. David. Tony, you mentioned uh, Steve Horn. Uh, your first win came with Steve Horn and Jerry Forsythe at the Michigan 500. It's very interesting to look at your career. 500-mile races have kind of defined your career. No matter how the 500 turns out, your first and your last win will be at a 500-mile race distance. What You're about right this year. You're right. Yeah. You're right. I like that. Yeah. So, so what about 500-mile races appeal so much to Tony Cannot? Man, I don't know that answer, actually. It's something that just... Obviously, like I said, I think I wasn't very good in the ovals, but then I've learned a lot how to be patient and how to play the race. And it really, it's funny that you say that because the 1999 Michigan 500 was supposed to be, we're fooling ourselves, the replacement of this place, which we all knew was silly. Um, and I won that, but it didn't feel like, you know, winning this. And, and it's just, it's really... The race, you have to understand the dynamic of this race. And, and you can get caught in so many things. You can be leading right away and you're like, this is... But the worst thing is to be leading a lap 20 because you still have 180 laps to go. And you're like, can we... I actually prefer not to. And, and that's something that, to me, what is about it, I don't know the right answer for you. I just think it's... I can study the race better than some other people. Go ahead. Hey, Ben. Hey, Tony. Congratulations you. on your career. You. Um, can you talk to us a bit about joining McLaren and kind of the atmosphere around that? You know, you've got Felix and you've got Pato, but you've also got Alex, who's won the 500 before as well. How excited are you to be joining the team with those guys? It's funny because um, Alex and I didn't hit off at all uh, when he first came to the series. We actually didn't like each other and we're really good friends even before I signed with McLaren. Um, the team, I mean, I see a, a lot of people of willing to, to make this team grow. We have grown quite a bit since last year. It's, it's a lot. Managing people, it's hard. I think Gavin has a lot of work in his hands with Zach, but they have the right mentality. Sam's still there. Um, and we're growing, right? But there is a lot of eyes on us. We, we can't, despite the fact that people are expecting us. You have four guys, 2,500 winners in a team. We have to perform. So the team is working on that. As far as the guys, it was funny. We went to dinner at Thermal. Um, I was there and, and I got to know Pato a little more. I felt like I was talking to my 15-year-old kid <laughs> the entire dinner. He's showing me. You know, look, look at this text, look at this picture. I'm like, oh man, this is this reminds me. And then, he, and then he reminded me of Dan as well. Like he's asking me 
a million questions. Like, so in your time, what would you, I'm like, and Felix is, I had a little bit of, uh, uh, I've known Felix when he was at Ganassi, but, and Felix is still Felix. Like, uh, can you give me a ride? I said, yeah, you don't have a car. No, I have a car, but I don't know where I parked it. <laughs> so that's Felix for you. And he did not know. And we had to drive around the parking lot and he had, you know, the alarm key trying to press it. I said, what car is it? It's a white car. I don't even remember. I said, Felix, it's in the key. It's a rental. It has a name, a brand. So I think we're going to hit it off. I mean, him and Pato are really close. Uh, Rossi is more of the wise guy and quiet, but has a, a very funny sense of humor, which is cool because it, it mingles really well. I'm enjoying it a lot. It's, I'm... I'm well known of not having any problems with my teammates, uh, but we have a good bunch. Excellent. Uh, looking forward to the 500, and congratulations on a great career. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Ben. Nathan. Hey, Tony. Congrats hey, on um, everything today and, and on your career. Um, my question, I know you've kind of touched on this a couple times today, but um, a couple weeks ago, you told us that you felt like you weren't going to know whether this was going to be your last one. Well, I couldn't process. tell you, man. I mean, <laughs> sure. I was going to spoil it. <laughs> um, as we've referenced today, you've either thought this was going to, or thought a race was going to be your last one, or had actually announced it a couple times. Um, you said earlier that it's just time. Can you take us a little bit more into the thought process of why now and why announcing ahead of the race instead of? taking a chance and rolling the dice and seeing what might come for you in 2024? Sure, that's a good question. <clears throat> well, let me put it this way. We, we're in the sport that you have to perform. And unfortunately or not, we're all judged by our last result. And that can drive you up or can drive you down, right? Um, let's be real here. If I hadn't done what I did last year, probably we had been my final one. That's why I didn't make any announcements because that was exactly what I thought. Then you go out and you fight for the lead and you fight for the win until the last lap. And then you're in a high and people actually are demanding, why don't you come back? Then you get an invitation from a very good team to do it. So chances are you're playing with the odds here. You don't know what's gonna happen. So I didn't wanna wait. I said, you know what, if I win, Zach's going to have a problem, but also I can look around and say, all right, well, I said it was, I'm happy with that, and I'll just come back here the following year to grab my baby Borg in front of everybody and say, guys, have fun, I'm enjoying this, but yeah, that's why, I mean, I decided that, you know, uh, I'm 48, although we keep saying we're young, I'm, I've been doing part-time races for the last four years now let's face it, I'm not gonna get a full-time job in a top team right now we have so many young guns these kids are unbelievable and you know I know people kept saying that for years and years the old guys were still performing which is good for us I mean every time Mario wins trust me as much as I I hate the guy because we fought our lives the entire our entire lives it's good because it shows that we can still do it the time is coming you know it's not Something that, oh, if I win, now if I win, I'll get a, a full-time ride in 2024 at McLaren. I mean, look who they have there. I look at Penske, look again. I mean, all the teams now. It's, so it's, that's why. I think it's, it's, it's in the wall and it's fine. Just to, I guess, kind of clarify. So you feel like, I mean, there's maybe some shadow of a chance that we see you again after the 2023 500? No, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. I mean, I, I you know. As much as people make fun of me, I think even if I win, I think it would be a good way to go home. Take one more, then we'll take a few off of Zoom. Steve, go ahead. Going a little bit off of what Nathan asked, you've got four kids, they're getting older. What was the discussion like with them? They, all they know is, is Dad, the IndyCar driver. And also with Lauren, you know, it's a point where she comes to you and says, okay, time for... You know, you guys, that's, that's the funniest thing because she hates that I say that, that I'm actually, she's like, why? Like, she's the one that questioned completely the opposite of any other person that would, any other wife would say, you know, probably she doesn't want me home, Steve, that's probably why, but um, she's the one that questioned and 
she doesn't, she's the one that says, no, you have more, you have more. I've never seen a person. I got out of the car last year. I was okay. I mean, I wasn't like mad, but I was like, I thought I had it, especially with my restarts. I've never saw a person so mad. She could not get, like, she couldn't get it off. I'm like, just stop. Anyway, so she's not the one. Um, the conversation was just the one that I just actually explained to Nathan. We, I see it. I see it up there. With the kids, Leo, which is 15, he's like, and Deco that is eight. I mean, we, we really, like, I didn't make a big deal out of it, Steve. It's not... I don't want them to be sad. I don't want them, I mean, they love it. I mean, they see race cars. I mean, Max and Nina, they're, you know, six and four, but they see race cars. It's says, daddy, daddy, daddy. But it wasn't like, okay, let's have a family. Because honestly, we're going to keep coming here regardless. As long as Jay and Mark give me a pass and give them a pass, we're going to be here. Um, and I'm not retiring for real. Like, I'm still, I have 19 races this year still to go that I actually, I'm racing. And other 12 IndyCar races that I'm coming to, you know, to do something for NTT, for, you know, for IndyCar. For, so it wasn't, that conversation didn't happen. You know, it was just like, hey, we're just going to do something different. We're probably not going to drive that type of car anymore. But so we didn't make a big deal out of it. Thanks, Steve. Uh, let's take a couple off of Zoom. We'll begin with David Malsher Lopez from Motorsport.com. Hey, David. Hey, Mark. Uh, congratulations, Tony, on making Thanks, the big decision. Um, wanted to ask what is next? Uh, you know, is there a chance of you uh, racing IMSA, uh, uh, being a race control steward, a driver coach, <laughs> stunt driver, NHRA like Tony Stewart? Um, just wonder what's, what you foresee happening in 2024. That's a good question. The, uh, I. I you know, I don't think, after, uh, uh, I, had, I had an encounter with Jay Fry in Detroit one year that I know I've, I've, I've actually uh, experienced the other side of Jay that I don't, I shouldn't have done that. That was totally my fault. So I don't think I want to be a race steward. I don't want to take Max's job either because he's going to cry that I make his kids starve. He can't sell enough steering wheels in his life. Max likes his job way too much. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, I mean, I'm not even probably, and I'm judging a guy that he's probably really good at his job, and I'm not. So, um, look, I have plenty left. So, whatever, I will drive anything. So, I, I don't have any plans. Uh, I do have some commitments with my team, um, with Aaron McLaren. Um, I do have a contract this year with all the other series, but 2024, it's wide open right now. Um, I would love to be involved in IndyCar, for sure, and any way we can figure something out. Um, but racing-wise, obviously, we won the 24-hour Daytona, which I'm, I'm actually wearing that watch with my ring. This is what I do. It's kind of a tradition. I don't wear it any other time. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I'll, I'll do whatever. You know what I mean? It's not. It has a wheel and... A steering wheel and, a, and four wheels in an engine I'll be driving but I haven't made any plans um, past past this year okay and then I uh, also uh, wanted you to name your your favorite race or the one that you think is underappreciated that you didn't win yeah what was oh, your greatest that's easy. drive your greatest drive in IndyCar I guess um, then what didn't come out as a victory in the end uh, the Sam Pete, two thousand. It was two thousand five. The one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I was. I passed Briscoe for the lead. We hit. Then just blew by me. Uh, that race I was gonna win. I mean, easy. And I finished second. But then one, I finished second. Dario third, and Brian fourth was the first one, two, three, four in history. It felt like a win to me because I had four of my best friends in the podium. Despite that, what happened to them afterwards, well, I'm not even counting that because at the time, obviously, we never thought that was going to happen. It felt like a win because my best friend at the time has one. I had my other two best friends in the podium. So sometimes you just have to learn how to accept that you finish second that race. But that was probably one that I that I would I would say, you know, it's. It didn't feel like a win, but it felt like a win.
Right. Okay. Awesome, mate. Um, I've got a ton of other questions, but they will have to wait another time. You have my number. Thanks. You texted me yeah. yesterday, so don't don't play yeah. games. Uh-huh. Just call me. Yeah. Okay, mate. Thanks a lot. Cheers, Thanks, Steve. Or, or join us in St. Pete, David. We'll see you down there. Uh, let's, mm-hmm. go to, that's right, let's go to Nate Ryan from NBC Sports. Hey, Nate. Hey, Dave. Thanks. Uh, most of mine have been answered, but I do have one more, TK. Uh, looking back at last year, how much did how well you ran uh, at Indy and, and the third place finish, how much do you think earn, of that earned you the call from Zach? What did he tell you about it? And if you hadn't had that performance last year, do you think this decision would have been made already? Uh, I think if I hadn't had that performance, the decision was made. 100% by me and the entire paddock, I would say. Um, the, well, I think Zach, you know, uh, to be fair, we, we tried to make it work with Chip. Chip just couldn't make it, you know, as far as the sponsor. Jimmy was leaving. Um, the deal was a two-year deal, so that was that. And then when Zach called, I said, Zach, look, we got to wait a little bit. I, I think I owe that to Chip, and we did that. And then when I, it was obvious that it was not going to happen, I said, hey, Zach, you want to talk? And Zach and I, I mean, people don't know this, but we raced against each other in 1993 in Europe. And Zach says we chat a lot. I spoke zero English. I don't know how we chatted. I don't remember what we did, kind of did. Um, so and that was it. And then honestly, it was, it was funny because the conversation was, it was a, a WhatsApp text. It says, hey, I'm ready. It says, well, me too. The next one was, do we have a deal? I said, yes. And that was it. I mean, we didn't discuss anything else. He sent me the deal. I signed it. I sent it back. It was no, like, it was very simple. And, and, and that's how it happened. But, yeah, Nate, I mean, if it wasn't for the result, I, I don't think I would be here today saying I'm racing my last one. I'll probably be here doing something else. Great. Thanks, TK. Congratulations. Thanks, Thanks Nate. You got it, Nate. And we'll take one more, uh, mm-hmm. only because I think this is going to make Tony smile. Uh, let's go to Wolfgang Mansour. <laughs> Wolfgang, go ahead. He, he needs to introduce himself. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, hello, TK. Can you hear me? Can yes. You hear me from yes. Okay, this time only one question. Um, I want to carry on the question David asked, uh, what kind of involvement you will have in future motorsport projects. What about setting up your own team, regardless what kind of championship? And the other thing, which is very confusing for me, you mentioned, I think, two or three times your age. I mean, 48, a very um, a famous American, Ernest Hemingway, once said, you are so old as you feel. Maybe you're 48, but maybe you feel like 28. All right, I do but, feel like 28. You know, with four kids at home, they, they make me feel young. Um, what was the first question? Yes, uh, two questions. So one ask question, two and that's two questions, right? Well, per tradition, yes, that's it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what was the first question, Wolfgang? Um, your future involvement in uh, My future in motor race, yeah. Is, yeah uh, is there any possibility you will set up your team? You know. Not in IndyCar, any kind of championship. Never say, I actually, I own an eSports team, which is giving me the feeling that I don't know if I really want to own a real team ever. So, you never know. I mean, I love racing and, and cha- I love challenges. And, and if the opportunity presents, 100%. I know for a fact... My wife will not let me spend any of my money, our, her money, sorry. Our money. No, no, hers. Oh, hers. Okay. In a race team. So, but if the opportunity presents, I'll consider. But anything that is involved in racing in an IndyCar, I'm, I'll be willing to consider for sure. Okay, thank you. See you on Indy this year. See you, my friend. See you, Wolfgang. Good to hear your voice, my friend. Uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up for now. Uh, Quick reminder, Tony is available for one-on-one, so for our local TV friends, if you'd like a chance to chat up uh, TK, you can do that. Otherwise, countdown is on now. Uh, Tony It'll be Friday, right? Friday we'll be here. 100, 100 days out 100 days then, out. and yeah. then uh, can't wait. When I, I, really, uh, I want to thank Mark Miles and, and Jay for coming. I know they took out time of their busy schedule, but I think they came here to make sure... <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. I think Mark was a part of the first uh, go around. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Just, you never know. Yeah. Uh, driving the number 66 Smart Stop Aero McLaren Chevrolet, the 107th running of the Indianapolis 500. It is Tony Kanaan. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Congratulations, my Thank friend. Thank you.